So there's this really well-known story in the Bible where Jesus was teaching children of all ages. So picture this. There's, there's this really large crowd, probably outside someplace in a field, and Jesus is teaching to this great crowd of people. And so who do you think were there? I mean, what, what types of people? There was, you know, men and women and, you know, married couples and people of all ages, singles and kids. There was families there. And a large number of these people recognized Jesus as the Messiah, the Savior, but some didn't. But how cool would it be to hear Jesus sharing and teaching that you could hear the Word of God from God? I mean, parents, wouldn't you bring your kids? I mean, what did you say? Come on, Jesus is out there. So if you can, you can open up your Bibles or your Bible apps to uh, the Gospel of Matthew chapter 19. So Jesus went down to the region of Judea, east of the Jordan River, and there was large crowds that followed him there. And he was teaching people, and he was healing the sick. But not everyone was there to be prayed for, because like I said, remember there was people there that believed Jesus was the Messiah, but there was people who did not. And there was, I guess, hecklers in the crowd. Uh, some of them were Pharisees who came down just to try to trip Jesus up. And as they were talking to him, they were trying to ask him these gotcha questions, you know, about marriage. Well, how do you define marriage? Because according to the Bible, it says this. And according to the word of God, it says this. They're trying to capture Jesus. But it states in Matthew 19, 13 through 15, that Jesus at this point was focused on the crowd with the families and the kids. One day, some parents brought their children to Jesus so he could lay his hands on them and pray for them. But the disciples, the disciples scolded the parents for bothering him. But Jesus said, let the children come to me. Don't stop them, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to those who are like these children. And he placed his hands on their heads and he blessed them before he left. In the Gospel of Luke, it gives a little bit more detail. Luke 18, 15 through 17. One day, some parents brought their little children to Jesus so he could touch and bless them. But when the disciples saw this, they scolded the parents for bothering him. Then Jesus called for the children and said to the disciples, Let the children come to me. Don't stop them. For the kingdom of God belongs to those who are like these children. The kingdom of God belongs to those who are like these children. I tell you the truth. Anyone who doesn't recognize the kingdom of God like a child will never enter it. And I'm reading that and I'm thinking, well, why did Jesus say this? It's like, what exactly did he mean? And I, I started thinking and I, I talked about this a little bit like the first couple of months that we were open. Slightly different message, but I was talking about this verse and I was thinking, what happens to us adults as we get older, as we get older, what happens to us that Jesus has to say that unless we are like this child, we will not enter the kingdom of God? What happens to us? So I'm going to share this story with you. So when I was leading praise and worship at this elementary school here in, in Chico, and then I'd go lead worship for like a middle school, high school. For the most part, it was really awesome. It's like when we were going through praise and worship this morning, there was kids over here that were just dancing and singing. It was awesome. And Chip was with me. Yep, thank you, Chip. Chip was with me. And it was so awesome to lead worship for these kids. And we would share messages, and they enjoyed every moment. But during those years that I played and led worship and gave messages to the youth, I, I noticed something that was kind of unsettling, something that actually concerned me a lot. Now, the music that we played was geared towards youth. I mean, nearly every song was at that level that was kind of spoke to them, the words spoke to them, the style of music spoke to them. So they could relate to the words 
the only adults that were there most times were just the teachers and, and maybe some of the, some of the volunteers, the aides. But during the praise music, I noticed that the kids would place themselves in these categories, these groups. The first one, kids like ages, they were kindergarten to like fourth grade. Nearly every single one of them were totally involved. They were just like these kids that were here this morning. They're just singing, dancing, holding hands, just jumping and singing for Jesus. They were acting goofy and silly with this unbridled happiness and not caring about who was watching while they were praising God. Then there was a second category. Kids that were like the, oh, I'd say fifth to seventh graders. They would participate but a lower involvement level. They were kind of caught between this participation and this unrefrained kind of praising and worshiping, but they were caught in this place where you could see that they were deliberating. They were acquiring a perspective like they were saying, hey, you know, I'm not really a kid anymore. I don't know if I could be jumping up and down like this. You know, we may be getting a little too old for this. So we're just going to kind of half smile and half clap. The third one, the third category, the older eighth to ninth graders, they had a whole different kind of body language. This age group became really self-aware. You could tell they were thinking about people looking at them, and how they were being kind of presented to the others. They could tell people were looking at them. The girls, girls, I have two daughters, so it's cool. Girls were standing there like they didn't want to mess up their hair. And they didn't want to, you know, they were doing a lot of this, you know, and just to make sure things were okay. The guys, they were awkward. <laughs> They, they were acting like if they were trying to look cool, trying to find that position where they were listening and praising and worshiping, but trying to find that cool position, you know, just kind of, you know, just, they were really aware. But to me, the most interesting group were the 10th, 11th, and 12th graders. See, by the time they reached 15, 16, 17, 18, they had a little bit better grasp of who they were and pretty much decided who they were going to become and what they believed in life. They had a little bit more confidence either way. Who and what they liked and what they didn't like. But most importantly, I think they were pretty much already decided who Jesus was and how much Jesus was going to play a role in their life whether or not they understood, believed in Jesus. See, because those 15 to 18-year-olds, they were either participating or they weren't. There wasn't a lot of middle ground stuff going on with that age group. I mean, there were some kids, I still remember their names, I remember their faces. I can see these kids that were seniors, they were just clapping and raising their hands. and They were so into it. They were just so relationship, having a relationship with Jesus. But there was that age group, that 15, 16, 17, 18, that were not participating hardly at all. They were either still sitting down or talking to each other, kind of ribbing each other, a couple guys on the cell phone, or they would sit way in the back, kind of out of, out of, out of sight of everybody. There wasn't a lot of kids in that age group that were on the fence. So Here's a big highlight for you. I'm, I'm going to go backwards in the ages. I'm going to give you some perspective on this. The 10th and 12th graders, they made their decision pretty much. They almost stopped learning and being open to new ideas and beliefs. It was hard to get them to change their ideas and their thoughts and their perspectives. This group was almost all in or not. The 8th to ninth graders, they were gathering information. They were starting to make decisions. 
they were close to forming who they were going to become, who they were going to become as they got older. The fifth to seventh graders, you could see they were in, but there was distractions that were starting to set in, influences that were taken away from that unbridled, just happy, joyful relationship with Jesus. But this is why I'm going backwards. Because remember those preschool, kindergarten, up to like fourth grade? Almost every single one of them were in. They were clapping and singing and smiling and rejoicing and giving each other high fives and holding hands. And it was like, it was this very exuberant order even among that age group when they were worshiping. See, they were all in for Jesus. They accepted the joy. They accepted the love. They could feel it. And they didn't have all these distractions that the older kids had. And that is why Jesus was saying, come to me like little children. People that are not open and trusting and eager to learn and be humble. He doesn't want us to be full of junk that we as adults may tend to fill ourselves up with as we get older. These distractions and the burdens and the tough times and we lose our smiles and we lose our joy. Becoming like little children actually helps us mature spiritually because we learn more. We gather more wisdom. We're more excited. We're more eager. We're more humble. What makes us do that when we get older? We become so closed up, so full of these worldly thoughts and, and basically these roadblocks between our relationship with God and ourselves. Like in Matthew, when the children were held back by the disciples, as we get older, we actually don't need someone else to put their arms out and hold us back because we do a pretty good job of that ourselves. We tend to hold ourselves back from this awesome relationship that Jesus wants for us. In that field, wherever they were, Jesus was healing people. It could have been healing them physically. It could have been healing them emotionally, physically, spiritually, emotionally, whatever. Jesus was putting his hands on people, and they were being restored. And when the children wanted to approach him, and they were held back, Jesus said, let them go. Let them come to me. As we get older, we get so set in our ways. It's so hard to change. It's like those kids I was leading worship with. I could see them as they were, like if they were aging in front of me. I could see them slowly pull away from Jesus, from that open, joyful relationship. That was hard to watch. When we are like children and open to learning the truth and adjusting, see, we don't have minds and hearts that are bogged down with what the world says we should be concerned about. When we are open, open and we are running towards God, we don't care too much about what others have to say about us because we know what God thinks of us. See, God says each one of us is a marvelous and beautiful work. God doesn't make mistakes. Psalm 45, 45. Lord my God, you have done great things, marvelous works and your thoughts towards us. Marvelous. So how do we get back to that? If Jesus says to us, like it says in Matthew, Jesus says, come to me like little children, and we look in the mirror and we're just way too adult. There's that burden on us. There's that heaviness on us. You look in the mirror, maybe you're not smiling. Maybe your reflection is trying to smile back. What must we do to become this new child? In John 3, 5 through 8, Jesus is talking to a Pharisee. He says we must be born again. There was a Pharisee, Nicodemus, a religious leader. He was curious about Jesus, and one, one evening, when it was dark, he came to speak with Jesus, and he said, Rabbi, 
We all know that God has sent you to teach us your miraculous signs and evidence is that God is with you. In John 3, 5, 8, it says, Jesus replied, I assure you, no one can enter the kingdom of God, like he said in Matthew, without being born of water and the Spirit. Humans can reproduce only human life, but the Holy Spirit gives birth to a spiritual life. So don't be surprised when I say you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it wants, just as you can hear the wind, but can't tell where it comes from or where it is going, so you can't explain how people are born of the Spirit. See, Jesus is again mentioning how we enter the kingdom of heaven. Born again, accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and becoming childlike with that trust, that childlike desire and passion that's not held back by any distraction. Seeing ourselves fresh and new through the Holy Spirit. See, we change our priorities and our perspective on life way too fast as we get older. We need to start over. We need a fresh chance at life, at our relationships, our friendships, the way we present ourselves at work. We need to take off these weights, these roadblocks, these hindrances that made us a bunch of grumpy old people. If we are to represent Christ, they need to see joy and passion and praise and worship and the Holy Spirit leading our lives. If they just see a bunch of grumpy people, women, men, what's attractive about that? See, we need to see this world in a whole new light through the eyes of the Holy Spirit so that when people see us, they don't see the world that they're living in. They see the Holy Spirit. They see the truth in God's Word. See, a baby, as they get older, they learn by the guidance of their parents or their guardians. We need to turn our lives over to God like that full of trust, enthusiasm, no shame, with joy and dancing and laughing, with this wide-eyed hope of the day that's going to unfold before us, not with dread. How many of us get up in the morning, oh man, it's Monday again. <laughs> I got to get up. You know, oh, I'm asking the same thing. Me, <laughs> I've done that. I, I got tired of doing that. We need to seek the truth and live to be born again through Christ with total trust, with a childlike approach to just go with Jesus and just let him love on us. The second one, like I said, we can't let the world burden us and steal our childlike joy and passion. See, in that Matthew eleven twenty-eight 28 through 30, Jesus said, come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. As we get older, we just get bogged down. We lose that childlike approach. Our moods change. We pick up these burdens. We don't let them go. We stop growing our relationship, and, and, and God says here, let me teach you. As adults, we think we know everything. Jesus is saying, let me teach you like a child. Number three, as adults, we can still act like a kid and still be cool. So if we go to Jesus like a child uh, and we find that inner child in each of us again, we have to look at, okay, well, what's, what are these roadblocks? What's preventing me from getting up in the morning and going, Lord, today is your day. I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. And there's nothing that's going to happen today that you and I can't handle. Jesus. You got my back. What are those roadblocks? Well, I'm just going to give you three of them, although there's multiple ones. I'm going to kind of condense them for you. Remember again who Jesus says that we are in this world. Remember don't take upon yourself what the world says you are. Remember, God says 
You are marvelous. Number two, surround yourselves with others that are on that same foundation, that have that godly passion and joy and contagious. And I keep going back to these little girls that were over here, little, they were probably 10, 11, but they were holding hands and there was two or more gathered just right there where they were praising God, holding hands, dancing, jumping up and down. Be with people that lift you up and not tear you down. And I know that's hard in the workplace. I get it. But see, you are called to be a light among the darkness. Make sure you don't let that darkness snuff the light out. So be with people that lift you up and not tear you down and be one of those people that lifts others. Third one, and this is a whole message onto itself. This could be a six-week series where every day is church and, and we could teach just on this. Is it up there? Yeah. Forgive like a child. The biggest roadblock between us and our relationship with Jesus is unforgiveness. See, kids get hurt, cry one moment, laugh the next. Adults get hurt, we stay hurt. You know, we chase people down in our cars who cut us off. We don't talk to somebody at work for a couple of weeks because they looked at me funny or they didn't let us borrow their tool or, you know, or they made me look bad at a meeting and we hold this in. Just, you know, some neighbor let their dog in our yard and we don't talk to our neighbors. Pick a reason. That is the biggest roadblock in us going to the Lord like a child. We don't forgive like a child. I remember how many times I look at my kids and I, I think of them and I, I remember when I, I accidentally, accidentally step on their foot or I, I remember one time we were sitting on the couch watching a movie and I went to reach for something and I popped Mary right in the mouth. And I just, I felt so bad. I was like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And she looks at me, she goes, that's okay, Dad, that's okay. Just like that. She goes, it was just an accident. You know? She'll say our famous line, in, in famous line in our house is, we don't get mad at accidents. It was an accident. Now, if I told you, <laughs> and you did it again, it's no longer an accident. But, but she looked at me and said, it's okay, Dad, it was an accident. We don't get mad at accidents. She's so quick to forgive. If I accidentally hit somebody at work, they look at me, hey, man, what's up with that? You know? <laughs> They not, they're not so quick to forgive. Adults. Like I said, this could be a whole new message. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of close with some of this now. If we are having problems seeing this inner child in us that will allow us to grow in our relationship with God, allow us to mature, like get off that milk and get onto the meat of the Word of God and His relationship with us, we can still keep that childlike passion, that trust, that openness <clears throat> to learning about God and growing. I've got a video for you. Now, I showed it once before, but I'll show it again because I want you to see yourself. I want, when you see these people in this video, I want you to place yourself in the, in the place of those adults. And I want you to think about, do you have this childlike joy, this passion for God? You wake up in the morning excited to learn more about Jesus. I'm the lyrical gangster. Big up the queen of the area. Still love you like that, that. No, no, we don't die. Yes, we multiply. Anyone press me, hear the fire they sing.
anybody not seen that before, first time? All right. Do you wake up in the morning like that? Do you wake up, look in the mirror, and just see joy and exuberance and a childlike passion to just get up and dance and say, Lord Jesus, you and me today, let's go take this world on and let's show some light. Let's show some passion. Let's dance. Let's sing. Let's go out and be like children with nobody holding us back, especially ourselves. Amen? Give Lord some praise for that. That was awesome. The proverb I'm going to share with you right now is 22.6. This is a Bible verse that parents in every school probably uses that's, you know, Christian-based. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. So here's the turn. The turn is the enemy would like nothing more than to get our kids as soon as possible. He knows, like I described earlier, that the older we get, we get more set in our ways, and the harder it is to change directions and run back to God. The older we get, the more bogged down that we get, the more deceived we get as to who we're supposed to be. And, you know, if you're a parent and you've got teenagers, you kind of know what I may be talking about sometimes. As they get older, they get set in their ways. Well, this question isn't really just about the kids. It's not just about the kids that we're training up. But this also, if God calls us to be childlike on our approach, if Jesus said, let me teach you, and he was talking to adults, this doesn't exactly, is not exactly meant for just children. It's also meant for us adults. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. That's us. For us to remember the word of God and apply it now, so we have wisdom and direction that we learned when we were younger. Not just younger in age, but even our, even our relationship with God. When the, our relationship with God was fresh and new, and it was brand new. That excitement that we had, we don't want to lose that. So, finally, if we remember anything about today's message in the Gospel of Matthew, find your inner child and run to Jesus. Don't let anything or anyone hold you back. So, like it says, Jesus can touch you, he can hug you, and he can bless you. So, like children, we can all enter the kingdom of heaven together. Amen? Amen. Amen. Give the Lord some praise.